So, uh, John McGrain, let me start with you first. Um, David Blevins there uh, talking about the language of alignment and, uh, in particular, regulatory alignment, which is apparently satisfactory to Britain, and regulatory divergence, which wasn't. Can you explain the difference? Um, in, in the real world, no, but in politics, that could be five miles apart. I mean, I think the important thing is to acknowledge that people are working really hard on all sides today, as we can see, uh, to bring about a form of words that does work. And all they've done today is hit the pause button, not the stop button. There are another, effectively, two weeks to find the form of words. And it's clear that the UK, including Northern Ireland, is working hard, along with the Irish government and the EU, to find a form of words that does meet the EU27's needs for assurances on Northern Ireland. So you're fairly confident then, John, that some kind of recrafting of the text is possible to, to, on a, to satisfy honour on all sides? Uh, confident uh, in politics anything is possible and where people want to make something happen in politics they usually do and it's clear that a lot of work has gone in to bring people this close and with two weeks my own sense is that the goodwill has been evidenced and the, and the um, if you like the agreement on common purpose has been uh, focused enough by the deadline to get us to this stage so two weeks I think is as people have been saying in, in recent days, a doable amount of time in which to get a deal done. And the UK, including Northern Ireland, does know that we really do need to use that time well to get a deal because all borders are bad and all borders are bad for business and any border anywhere, frankly, between... All right. Edwin, let me uh, bring you in at this point. I mean, how on earth do you bridge the divide between what Dublin wants and what the DUP apparently wants? Well, it's been quite strange watching this all play out from, from London, I suppose, because we've had uh, you know, all the different players, slightly different uh, views on things, all these tiny disagreements about, about the language. At, at least they are talking about the language. If you've got a text on the table, you're a lot closer to your final agreement than perhaps we thought it was going to be a few weeks ago. I mean, really, what matters is whether or not they can get a deal at this summit. Um, and that, that's the, the only thing really businesses care about. And what about the point that David Blevins was making just now? If a special deal is done for Northern Ireland, Scotland and London, other remaining mm. voting areas, will want similar treatment, won't they? I, it's, it starts getting very messy when you're trying to you know, when the UK breaks up like that. I, clearly, it doesn't seem like the DUP want that to happen. I think, from from a business point of view, actually, um, a deal that works for the whole of the UK probably is the right thing. It's really just about finding then that space that the Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, and frankly, the Westminster government can all sort of come together. And we, we really hope we get that in the next couple of weeks. All right. Well, John, um, we've, we've heard tonight, uh, it's, it, in fact, it's being suggested right now, this term regulatory alignment is being offered for the whole of the UK by Theresa May, but only in limited areas of the Good Friday Agreement, such as agriculture and energy policy and so forth. Do you think that's going to be enough for both sides? No. Uh, the reality is that, um, you know, we've talked about north-south borders, east-west borders, borders in the sea. We, we certainly don't want to compound that by also adding borders between sectors, sectors that are in, sectors that are out, because we all know how that can be gamed, how it can spawn other sorts of activity, and it's not really the way forward. What we want is a common agreement on the fact that borderlessness coupled with uh, if you like, similarity in standards, because nobody in the UK is saying that the UK wants to default to lower standards of public health, of safety, of food or anything like that. So this is about commonality of standards across the province and across the UK and with, the, with Ireland and the rest of the EU27. And, you th and uh, John, Irish businesses at the moment, do you th what are you hearing from your mem members right now, other than the fact that, crikey, let's just go on and do a deal quickly? I think there's a genuine appreciation in Irish business, as there is in UK business and EU business, that politics is a tough business and people have to work hard to bring together really you know, complex, different points of view. So businesses behind our public representatives on this understands that the hard work has to be done, doesn't want any further delays because the clock is ticking in terms of preparing for replacement rules and replacement regulations. But uh, time is, is, is running on and we do need to use the next two weeks very well so that, frankly, we don't miss the December deadline, in which case it becomes too late for many businesses to prepare. Edwin, are you, have you been fielding calls this afternoon from anxious members? I mean, do you th are you confident that we will get something by the December deadline? <laughs> I'm confident. I've, I've no idea whether we're so confident. I, I think maybe we are probably more confident than we were a few weeks ago. Right. Um, but it's 
it's it's so important. The reason that we need to get this uh, movement now is because we need to move on to transition because cool. that that buys us some more time. If we can get a transitional agreement a couple of years after March 2019, that buys businesses some time. They don't have to do the big contingency planning right now. They don't have to make the big moves, and that really helps everything. One final thought, Edwin. I guess the DUP have to be careful they don't overplay their mm. hand because they could end up with a famous ally of Sinn Fein in Number Ten Downing Street. Um, I'm not sure I want to get too deeply into Northern Irish politics. I, I think the one thing on that is that we have lots of members in Northern Ireland, and certainly for a long time they were you know, kind of ignored as part right. of this question, but now they're back in it. OK, Edwin Morgan here in London, John McGrain in Dublin. Thanks both for joining me.